Breaking news, the car belonging to a missing mobile mother, Daniela Vianne, pulled from the waters of Bayou Serra today inside a woman's remains. Vianne was last seen in July of last year along with her newly purchased car. Investigators have struggled for the past nine and a half months to find a lead, but the answers finally came last night. Her Chevy Cruze was found in Bayou Serra in Serra Land. Investigators say the remains found inside the car Maybe Daniela's. News 5's Mary Smith has been following the story since Vianne was reported missing. She joins us live from the last place that Daniela was seen on Government Boulevard. Mary? Yeah, that investigation, which began nine and a half months ago at this gas station here just off of I-65 in government, has actually taken investigators 16 miles north in Sarah Land, where they say they found her car nearly 30 feet submerged in water. You've seen her face and heard her name countless times in the past nine and a half months. Daniela Vianne. Daniela Vianne. Daniela Vianne. A young mobile mother in her car seemingly vanishing in thin air, leaving behind a young daughter, Cora. The investigation led police to several places, including a Theodore property, after a possible tip, but nothing turned up. The department offered a $5,000 reward for information leading to her whereabouts. We want... Uh, to find Danielle alive. And even started a first ever blog to get tips about her case. Her family held vigils, praying for her safe return. Daniela's face even on a billboard at the side of the interstate. But let's start from the beginning. It was at this Shell gas station just off of government and I-65 that Daniela and her car were last seen late at night on July 17th. Nine and a half months later, we have finally uh, been able to uh, recover the vehicle. Daniela's blue Chevy Cruze found by divers in Bayou Serra. There is uh, a, a body inside the vehicle. Investigators confirm it's a woman, but the body will be tested for positive identification. It's not easy and it's not how we any of us wanted you know this to end up but at the same time there you know is some some closure and hopefully we'll figure out what happened to her and who did this to her and um, you know her and her family and her daughter will get justice. Police believe her car has been there for a while submerged in the water off the boat ramp in a quiet Sarah Land neighborhood. Crazy you think something like this happened so close to your house. This is what we needed nine months ago now we have it so now we have to you know follow the steps to help us figure out what actually happened to her. We have reached out to Daniela's family. They are asking for privacy during this time. Reporting tonight in Mobile, I'm Mary Smith, WKRG News 5. Thanks, Mary. Investigators spent this morning working to pull the car out of the water. That process, a tedious one, making sure not to damage any of the evidence. At this point, police do not know how long the car had been submerged. News 5's Katarina Lukatich was along Bayou Sarah as police pulled the car out of the water. The process was slow and methodical as divers worked to take photos of the car underwater. A Mobile police diver stumbled across something unusual last week during routine training in Bayou Sarah. It wasn't until they dove again Thursday afternoon to have a closer look that they realized it was Daniela's blue Chevy Cruze. They came to the conclusion that this is uh, the vehicle that uh, Daniela Vian would have been driving at the time she went missing. The crime scene being underwater made it difficult for investigators. They had to be sure to document as much as they could before moving the car and remains that may have been there for months. But the ultimate goal, is, again, is to make sure that we preserve as much evidence as we possibly can as we go through this recovery process so that we can, uh, at some point, if we have to go into a courtroom, be able to uh, provide the family some level of closure from that perspective. The remains will have to be sent for forensic testing, but authorities say they have every reason to believe it's Daniela. We wanted to make a recovery of Daniela, but we didn't want to make a recovery of Daniela in this manner. With evidence now in hand, investigators will work to figure out how the car and body ended up in Bayou Sarah. In Sarah Land, Katarina Lukatich, WKRG News 5. Just a month before she disappeared, Daniela wrote a journal entry about the goals she had for the rest of her life. An entry from June 17th says, quote, what's the next step after getting a car? 
The journal entry also has several written goals for her daughter, including the phrase, we need to see the world as it could be, not what it is. Next Friday, a vigil will be held for Daniela Vianne at the boat launch in Bayou Sarah. It will begin at 6.30. News 5 plans to be there. Many of you watched as Daniela's car was pulled from Bayou Sarah. The easiest way to stay up to date on this case is by downloading the News 5 app. We will send you every update as soon as we get it. More breaking news now. A second arrest made in a violent home invasion in Mobile. Terrence Nelson is charged with robbery for now. Police say more charges are likely. Francilla Chastang was previously arrested. Both are accused of robbing, beating, and stabbing 81-year-old Margaret Campbell Tuesday at her home on Pineda Court off of DIP. Her family says she is doing better, but... She remains tonight in intensive care. The woman charged with killing a motorcyclist on I-10 in Daphne earlier this week made her first court appearance this afternoon. Police say 24-year-old Prentice Reese was under the influence of drugs when she hit the three-wheeled motorcycle, killing the driver. News 5's Debbie Williams was in court this afternoon. Princess Reese will have to come up with a lot of cash to get out of jail, and we also learned a little more about her in this afternoon's bond hearing. Dressed in a black and white jail uniform, Princess Reese was in court for the first time since Wednesday's interstate crash that killed Mississippi motorcyclist Philip Aldred. Charged with reckless manslaughter, DUI, and giving false names to law enforcement, Judge William Scully set a total bond of $115,000 and added that it'll have to be paid in cash. If she's able to make that bond, she will be on GPS monitoring, drug tested, and she can't drive. Investigators say Reese was behind the wheel of a Nissan Titan pickup and high on prescription drugs when she rear-ended Aldred's Harley-Davidson trike as he traveled east on I-10 through Daphne Wednesday. Reese told the judge she's lived in Mobile for almost a year, has a job at a hotel, and is currently on probation for an aggravated battery charge out of Louisiana. On the Baldwin County Beat in Fairhope, Debbie Williams, WKRG News 5. Alabama's drug driving law says no one can drive while under the influence of a controlled substance if that substance renders the driver incapable of safely driving. A DUI conviction in Alabama is punishable with up to a year in jail and a $2,100 fine. Your driver's license could also be suspended for 90 days. A busy day at both the Bankhead and Wallace Tunnels. This is video of an 18-wheeler that overturned this morning near the entrance of the Wallace Tunnel eastbound. Traffic was delayed for hours. News 5 also received reports of a car carrier that crashed into the Bankhead Tunnel. No word on injuries in either crash. Bond denied for a man charged with murder. Alexander Bridges is accused of shooting and killing Richard Smith last June on Mohawk Street. Jaden Little is also charged in the crime. His mother turned him in days after the murder. Smith was shot while leaving his mother's house. It was the second time that Smith had been shot last year. The first time came at a gas station during a robbery. Drug charges are expected to be filed against a garbage truck driver in Citronelle. Police say they pulled over Benjamin Weber in his truck this week. Inside, officers say they found six grams of meth. He was taken to Metro Jail for a probation violation and the new drug charges. Weaver was first stopped for not having a license plate. A bill signed into law today by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis gives benefits to firefighters who've been diagnosed with cancer. 45 other states have similar laws already on the books. The bill makes 21 types of cancer an on-the-job injury for Florida firefighters. This is a big deal because it provides the full cost of treatment along with a $25,000 payout. It also grants disability pay and death benefits for beneficiaries. A wide-ranging education bill is also expected to be signed by Governor DeSantis. Once official, it will help students plan for careers, even if they don't want to go to a four-year college. Besides promoting career and technical training, the bill would also require high schools teach financial literacy. In addition, the bill provides help for students who want to return to college if they are just a few credits short of earning a degree. Still ahead, could a comeback be in the works for the duck boats in the port city? We'll show you a Facebook post hinting at a return. The name of our boat is the Amen. I started crying. A senior skip day turns into a nightmare for a couple of students. Why the boat that rescued them seems to be a godsend. I'm Alan Seals, horsing around just a little bit at the Foley Hot Air Balloon Festival. We've got more of that coming up.